You may wish to take a moment and pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. What we're going to first do is take Q2 and we're going to move it infinitely far away from the other charge. And why would we do that? Well, if we move Q2 infinitely far away, then the only charge that's left over is Q1 and we will be able to determine some useful information about Q1 if we move Q2 infinitely far away. So to understand that further, let's take a look at the graphs. We're gonna go ahead and just imagine grabbing Q2 and just sliding it to the right. We're gonna grab it, move it to the right along the x-axis and do it so much so that it basically is infinitely far away. It's basically gone, essentially. So we're just gonna remove it from the figure. And when we remove it from the figure, the only charge now that's producing electric potential at the origin is Q1. So we might say that the potential, and this is at the origin, is is going to be the potential produced by charge one and that's going to equal a constant times the value of charge one and then divided by the distance from charge one to the origin but that was symbolized as d now we actually know what that potential is because of this statement right here it says that as x approaches infinity in other words as we grab q2 and move it infinitely far away along the positive x-axis then the potential value approaches this number right here so we can actually plug that number in for v1 V1 is the potential produced by Q1. And again, only Q1 is present right now because we've moved Q2 infinitely far away. So only Q1 produces potential. Now it is useful to sort of hold on to this expression for now. This is K times Q1 over D. We're gonna put a little check mark right there and we're gonna be referring back to that value momentarily. But now let's bring Q2 back. We've moved it infinitely far away. Let's go back and let's grab it here and we'll put it back and now the question is well where should we situate it where would be a useful place to situate q2 and if we look at the graph there is a nice point right there that will be useful to us now the x coordinate of that point is going to be useful to obtain we were told that x sub s was 16 centimeters there are one, two, three, four tick marks to get to X sub S. So if you divide 16 by four, then you get four centimeters. So each tick mark is four centimeters, which means that the second tick mark here is located at eight centimeters. Now, what is that? That is the distance of Q2 from the origin. So you can now imagine that this distance right here, once we've moved Q2 back, is the eight centimeters. Now eight centimeters, of course, is 0 0.08 meters. We'll put that into a standard unit. And we can see that the total electric potential right now is zero. It is indeed zero. So with both charges present in the picture, we can say that the sum of the electric potentials is going to equal V1, that's the potential from Q1, and then plus V2, that's the potential from Q2. Now, again, the total potential right now at the origin is zero. So we would plug zero in right here. As far as V1 is concerned, well, that's the potential produced by Q1. Q1 hasn't moved. It's still sitting there a distance D from the origin. So that's going to be K times Q1 over D. And then we're going to add the potential produced by Q2. That's going to be K times Q2 over the distance, which we said was 0 0.08. So far, so good. But now here's what's kind of nifty is that this K times Q1 over D, we had solved for that earlier. We obtained this value right here, which means we're going to be able to plug that value in for the KQ1 over D. And now we have an opportunity to actually solve for Q2. So we could subtract the 5.76 times 10 to the minus seven volts from both sides. And then to solve for Q2, we will multiply by 0 0.08 over K. We'll do that on both sides of the equation so that, ooh, that's a weird K, so that we can cancel out the 0 0.08s and the Ks. We'll plug in the standard value for K as well. And when we compute that, we get a value of around negative 5.13 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs is the standard unit of charge. But this question didn't want the answer in coulombs. It wanted the value in terms of E, which is sort of the amount of charge on a fundamental particle like an electron or a proton. So we just have to do a little unit conversion here. Let's take our answer 
that we developed in terms of coulombs. And let's recall that one elementary charge has a magnitude of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs of charge on it. So we're going to basically divide by that 1.6 number. And when we do that, we get negative 32. The coulombs cancel and we're left with E. So as a multiple of E, we can see that the charge Q2 is equal to negative 32.